Hello and welcome to this weekend's edition of the Editor's Roundtable on CNBC TV 18. I'm Rahul Arora, back on the anchor seat after 15 years through the day at the CNBC studios. Not quite in the capacity of an anchor just yet as a guest editor, but in the company of the editors of CNBC TV 18 and some of my really dear friends who have given me this very kind opportunity to do this after 15 years. Thank you so much to all of you. And it feels good, good to, to welcome you, you guys go Rahul, into your house. Rahul, Rahul, I'm telling you, I'm so happy that in 2008, was it, uh, you decided that you want to do something else because, I mean, if you were here, none of us would have a chance, honestly speaking. <laughs> you are so good even now. I mean, just, just, I just effortlessly, you know, just like walk in and, you know, I take your anchoring like... I still remember the ways to do it in 7 a.m. Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely, <laughs> Rahul. Cannot, uh, but, well, but Rahul, uh, of course, Rahul is, Rahul is still one of us. You know, it's just never felt like, you know, Rahul has gone away. So every time he comes here, uh, uh, it just feels like, you know, you're back home. The heart is still beating a little fast. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe I actually opened the show. But thank you so much for But you're looking good in the option. anchor's chair and, you know, you're lighting up our screens now. So thank you. No, thank you for having me. But it's, it's, uh, it, it was a job done long, long time back. And I think you guys are are doing a marvelous job. I mean, when Anuj proposed this to me, I was so scared. I was like, my God, will I even be able to do it? <laughs> But uh, I practiced that opening line about 10 yeah. times. So. <laughs> no, 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 but it was straight off the bat. Huh? It was yeah. One take. <laughs> you came to the crease, you stood and you just delivered. I mean, <laughs> so done. we scored there. Well done. Done, done, done. Absolutely. Good to have you here, Rahul. Thank you so and much. And of course, we have a packed uh, show. And uh, let's uh, start by talking about the markets. Uh, uh, well, for starters, it's a long weekend after after a really long time. So I think uh, the bulls were really in a party mode today. Mm. And uh, especially in the last one hour, we had another 100 point added to the Nifty. This week squarely belonged to the bulls. I mean, yeah, everything participated, even IT stabilized. Yeah. Banks kept doing well. FMCG, look at the way Nestle moved today this week. Uh, I mean, ITC is at a fresh all time Cal high. Consumer up 8 9% this week. Absolutely. I mean, just the kind of slow, you know, giants which were moving this time, it was phenomenal. And one more thing, this time, the market moved has come on back of good market bid. So there's no complaint that uh, my portfolio is not moved up. This has been a broad In story. fact, April has always been a very, very good month for the mid-cap and the small-cap indices. You pull up the last 10, 15-year data and only in 2019 we saw a down year. Otherwise, April has always been good and even this month, April, 4% on the Nifty, 6.5% yeah, on the mid-cap index and on the small-cap index, 7.5%. So the breadth of the market has been really good. As you said, Anuj, those portfolios that were feeling absolutely rogered, you know, towards the end of March, particularly the last five days, all that seems to have at least come a little bit, uh, you know, it's looking much better at the end of April in comparison to what absolutely. we saw at the end of March. Absolutely. Rahul, what have you made of the market actions? The market was oversold, the derivative positions were telling us, you know, it was screaming for a rally. But uh, hand on heart, nobody would have expected this kind of rally. Your thoughts? No, no, it's been a phenomenal rally, right? I think the day the RBI policy happened, the Nifty was at 16,900. So you almost had a 1,000-point run on the Nifty itself. But there's a very interesting observation you make about consumer run, which I think if you remember last year, the trade was basically between IT and banks. Uh, and I think after Infosys' shocker, you may actually see some of that money route itself through consumers. So I'm not really sure if the market is primed for you know hitting all-time highs just yet because I don't think the data points entirely support it. But I think there is a little bit of sector churn happening and I think there will be enough money making opportunities. I still maintain this will broadly be a range bound market for the year. But if earnings don't disappoint, then the chances for the upside are a little more than they are on the downside is my sense. Uh, Nimesh, uh, dealing rooms must be heaving a sigh of relief, right? Well, absolutely. So, you know, we all spoke about the wave. You know, the April has been a good, strong month. You know, five percent on the Nifty, seven eight percent on the mid cap and small cap as well. The good part is, is backed by FI buying. So, the FI FI seems to be back in the Indian markets. They are supporting the large cap names, and the sentiment has clearly changed for the better in the in the broader markets as well. And you know, that helps. Once once you see some technical levels getting broken out. The, the, the sentiment turns positive, the confidence comes back and that's showing up in the mid-cap and small cap. And, and good part is that that really helps me in finding my chatter, you know. So that's, that's really been a good week for me, so to speak, in terms of getting that. I guess, uh, you know, a couple of weeks back I spoke about uh, the MNA activity is, going to go, activity is going to pick up. That's clearly visible. This week we saw three large deals coming up. And uh, if my sources are to be believed, there are some big deals in the pipeline. So I guess that activity is going to pick up even further from here and you're going to see much large deals in the next few weeks from here on. So that's something I'll be, I'll be tracking very closely. 
So the heartening part is this rally uh, of 5% on the, on, the, on the Nifty is backed by institutional activity. So m &A action, uh, we've got the FOMC meet, auto sales, and plus, of course, earnings coming through the next week. So it's you want to tease us with the sector at least, Nimish? I mean, <laughs> let it be. Let, 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 let it be a surprise that. for a lot of people. So. All right. But Rahul, what did you make of any of the deals that were announced uh, this week? You know, we had Godrej and Raymond. Uh, we had Ipka and uh, Unicam. You know, at every wedding, someone is not happy, right? And we had PI. No, I was and we had PI, which was think, phenomenal. Yeah, you know, yeah. PI was phenomenal. Anuj, I didn't take PI because the other party was not listed. Exactly. But, but otherwise, in every shadi, you have, you know, groom got lucky, you know, bride got lucky. <laughs> so that seems to have played out in the other two deals. But what do you make of it? I mean, Godrej, consumer, down, what, 10%? just because they went for this kind of deal. IPCA Laboratory is down more than 10% after they went in for Unicam uh, and PI Industries, dream run. A any comment on any of this? Yeah. No, I think the way to look at it, Nigel, is are these going to be EPS accretive and return ratio accretive? Yeah. That's as simple as that. And I think the reason PI went up today was because they finally fulfilled the reason for which they did the QIP. Yes. Right. right. It, there, was a, there was a failed attempt, if you remember. The yeah. deal yeah. almost yeah. went through yeah. Yeah. and then they pulled back. So I think that fulfillment and I think the fact that, uh, you know, when I spoke to my pharma and chemical analyst this morning, mm -hmm. they actually feel this could be better for PI in the yeah. longer run. I think at four and a half times, uh, which is the multiple for yeah. Godrej and Raymond, I'm not sure if those kind of multiples needed to be paid in the consumer sector, is, is my sense. Uh, so that probably explains it. And even in the pharmaceutical acquisition, again, I'm not really sure about how return ratio accretive it will be. See, if you go back to 2021 and compare it to 2022, the one big difference was 2021 had a lot of loss-making companies that were listed. 2022, not a single loss-making company listed, right? So I think people are back to looking at profitability and yes. return ratios. And I think in, in that context, any deal that's happening, you'll get the valuation in the street will reward you if they think it's accretive. Otherwise, I think the market, most parts of it are primed to perfection. So the, the room for error is very, very little is my sense. So I think you've got to use capital allocation today at an 18,000 nifty when most you know guys are priced to perfection yeah. is probably going to be the single determinant factor that separates the men from the boys is my sense. Okay, this week also pretty much wraps up the IT earnings season as well. So let me quickly um, give the report card. Uh, so on the whole, it's not been a great Q4. In fact, much worse than what the street would have anticipated, say exactly a month back. Your best case was that IT companies met estimates. But three out of the five large cap companies actually reported a decline in their uh, revenues this time. The best performer was the TCS with a revenue growth of just 0.6%. Midcaps broadly fared better. Midcap technology companies, uh, CoForge, Persistence, Scient, LNT Tech, KPIT Tech. But here again, it was just largely companies meeting estimates and that was rewarded by the street. But the performance was divergent. Unlike in the case of large caps, where across the board it was fairly muted and a dismal set of numbers, uh, in the case of Midcap IT, some did well and some were pretty weak. So LTI, Mindtree and Emphasis disappointed the street. Emphasis, of course, because on account of their large BFSI portfolio, and LTI, Mindtree is much larger than companies like CoForge and Persistent, nearly 4x the size. The revenue guidance by Midcap companies has been far more optimistic compared to the large caps. Large cap companies like Infosys and HCL Tech are guiding for a mid-single to high-single-digit kind of revenue growth. But Midcap are guiding for a double-digit revenue growth. Whether it's CoForge at 13 to 16% or assigned at 15 to 20%, even LTI Mindtree, which had a subdued Q4, has said that FI24, they are going to be seeing a double-digit growth. Where across the board we've seen a bit of a miss has been the margin performance, whether it's in large caps or in mid caps. And this raises the question whether in FI24 we will see margin expansion. This was the big narrative for IT companies that even if the top line falters, mid caps and EPS, sorry, margins and EPS will do well because of the diminishing supply side problem. But in Q4, margins have been a bit subdued. In terms of a stock price uh, performance, uh, large caps have actually done quite badly. So you've got TCS down 10% in the last one year, Infi's down nearly 20%. The companies, the mid caps, where we've seen a good performance, uh, the, you know, the earnings have been a pretty good picture. The stock market has rewarded them. So Scient is up 30% in the last one year. Persistent has a gain of close to about 10 odd percent. So that's uh, pretty much uh, the picture on the earnings, the guidance for FI. 24 and where the stock price is but you know Anuj despite me starting off by saying that you know it's not per se been a great quarter right uh, look at the price action this week the nifty ID index was up nearly about three three and a half percent so are you getting the sense that perhaps some of the large caps may have bottomed out 
Uh, yeah, that's the tough one, right? I, I think yeah. the mid-cap IT clearly is doing far better, Reema, that is visible. But you know what, I'm going to focus on Infosys in particular because that's clearly the bill with the stock. Uh, and let me just go to the big wall to just go through the numbers because uh, I'm taking into account 20 years of data. This is not the first time Infosys stock has fallen 40%. In fact, right when I started my career in the month that I joined CNBC TV 18, over the next three months, uh, uh, you know, this is a stock which fell 40%. This is the period I'm talking about. There have been five cases when the stock has fallen this much in the last 20 years. This is January to April 2003. The stock fell 40% from the peak. Let's go back to the first plate, please. Uh, uh, the stock fell about 40% uh, uh, from, the, from the peak to the bottom. And the reason at that time, of course, was the poor guidance. The first time actually Infosys came out with poor guidance was in 2003. Uh, and a shocker of a number, uh, there was bloodbath in the mid-cap IT space. Uh, but look at what happened immediately after that. Returns over the next one year, 100%. Then let's move on to the next plate. Uh, now this is, of course, the period in which the entire market fell. This was a time of global financial crisis, the equity markets globally going through a bear market. Stock from 2007 to 9 fell 54% from peak to bottom. As I said, it was in line with the, the global financial crisis and Nifty itself fell 58%. But again, returns over the next one year, look at that, 100%. Uh, when uh, you know it started to move up. Uh, the third instance was December 2010 to September 2011. This was pretty unique because the stock fell 36% from peak to bottom. There was general slowdown in IT, but there were also the beginning of leadership issues in IT because both Murthy and Nandan had moved on. And after that, Chris, Sibulal and others came in and there were some issues uh, in that period. And look at what happened actually after that. The returns over next one year were actually zero. So it fell 36% over a one, one and a half year period and then returned nothing over the next one year, which was quite interesting. Then we had the fourth instance, which was, uh, uh, of course, September 2019 to March 2020, we all remember that. The stock fell 30% from peak to bottom. There were two concerns. Uh, there was a whistleblower issue, which led to a big fall. And of course, there was COVID. But returns over next one year were 116%. And we all know it. This actually was the start of the great Indian bull market in the IT space. Uh, now, what do we have uh, in the last one, one and a half year? From January 2022 to now, the stock's fallen about 38% from peak to bottom. Again, the issues are US slowdown and the valuation compression because before the start of this fall, Infosys had gone to 31 times one year price to forward. Everyone said 30 times is new normal. We all knew that that, that wasn't the case, but then bull market, everything is justified. Returns over the next one year, we don't know the answer to that. But the next plate perhaps has some kind of answers in terms of what we can expect. Uh, Look at where the stock bottoms out and how much it rallies after that. In 2003, when it fell 40%, the stock bottomed out at 13 times one year forward, it gave you 100%. In 2009, it bottomed out at 12 times, it gave you 100%. In 2011, when it bottomed out 17 times, it stayed flat for zero, so it had it for, for a year, so it had a time correction. In 2020, again, when it bottomed out at 13x, it again gave you a one year return of about 116%. This year, what's happened is, it's fallen 38%, but right now, it's PE, and we we don't know if it's bottom yet, by the way, it's 17 times. So that's why the question mark in terms of returns over the next one year. You know, I'm giving you two scenarios. Scenario one is the stock bottoms out at historical PE of 13 times. In that case, it bottoms out at somewhere around 1,000. Now, I'm not saying it goes to 1,000, but that's one scenario. In that case, there's a good chance of it doubling. Other is it has a time correction. It bottoms out here 17 times and maybe has some time consolidation and some time correction. Uh, Rahul, your thoughts on Infosys? No, I think I'm pretty much in concurrence, uh, Anuj. I think, uh, you know, our IT analyst Girish has been a sell on the stock for quite some time. Uh, so I, I, I totally relate to the numbers that you're saying. The only th issue here, Anuj, with Infosys, and uh, I think Reema raised that, uh, that none of the other IT companies have been as bad as Infosys. Uh, the thing that worries us about the IT sector right now is that uh, there was no material damage in Q4 from an economic standpoint. Silicon Valley Bank happened towards the end of the quarter yes. in early April. Uh, last night's GDP print, the expectation was 2% in the US, it came in at 1.1% and the actual uh, for Q3 was 2.6%. So the slowdown is for real, you can see that. QOQ, the GDP in the US is down from 2.6 to 1.1% and if you see the pending home sales data in the US overnight, that was expected to be up by 0.5% but it's down 5%. So I think there are definitely cracks opening up in the US economy. That being said, if I think the 15th July numbers around when the Q1 results come, I think the IT companies will be a little more realistic with their guidance, is my sense. And I think the time to buy IT will probably be after those results. I would not buy them now. 
again, I'll, just like you said, I don't know whether Infosys goes down to 1000. But the question to ask as an investor, whether you're a retail or an institution is, do I need to buy it right now? Even if I'm going to say, even if I have a 15% return expectation, can I get that elsewhere without this much risk? And I think the answers are yes, I can. So I think I'm, I'm, I'm a structural long term bull on IT. Uh, but I think I would concur with Girish's thoughts on this, that it's probably not the right time to buy right now. You're seeing visible slowdown. There may be a little bit more of a valuation reset. If that happens, I would definitely go in and buy it. No matter how bad the results are after Q1, I think that's probably your entry point. Whatever the low is after that, I think that's where you go in and buy. Okay, all right. Noted that view. And Girish was in minority, right, when he came out with that call. But now, in fact, it's worked out perfectly. So kudos to him as well with regard to that call. We'll slip into a short break. When you come back, we'll tell you how the old economy stocks, that's the cement sector, has performed so far in this particular results season. Stay with us.